our top story. The European Union and Iran have been locked in a war of words. And after a lot of back and forth, it seems like the European Union is choosing the easier path. The 27-country bloc was mulling, branding Iran's IRGC as a terrorist outfit. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps is an important part of the country's armed forces. While the army protects the sovereignty in a traditional capacity, the IRGC ensures the integrity of the Islamic Republic. So Tehran was livid. The Iranian parliament tabled a new legislation. If passed, it would designate European armed forces as terrorists. The Ibrahim Raisi government further said it would be the death of all stalled talks between the two sides. But the European Union will not go as far as declaring IRGC as terrorists. It has instead decided to impose fresh sanctions against Iranian officials. It's not yet known what kind of sanctions will be imposed and who exactly will be targeted. But the bloc is looking at anyone who is playing a part in the crackdown against protesters in Iran. The United Kingdom, which is now out of the European Union, has decided to follow suit. Britain has imposed sanctions over human rights violations. These include assets freeze on Iranian Deputy Prosecutor General Ahmad Fazlian. The Slovenian Foreign Minister has called it one strong voice by the European Union. But is it? The bloc has been speaking against Iran using illegal means to quell the protests, especially the force used by the IRGC. Then what is stopping them? The European Union foreign policy chief is blaming the legal process. He says it is something that cannot be decided without the intervention of a court of law. May I uh, recall you that they are already as a group under sanction since 2010 because of their participation to proliferation activities on uh, massive uh, destruction arms. Now, we are considering, but this is not a decision to be made today, we're considering to sanction them under another regime. We're looking closely at it and nothing is ruled out. Since the protests uh, began in September last year, the United States, the European Union and others have imposed waves of human rights sanctions. But have these had any impact? Not so far. The crackdown continues as we speak. Residents are being put behind bars and new executions are being handed out each day. Similar sanctions haven't stopped Iran from enriching uranium in the past. So why will it stop them from silencing their own people? For more on this story, we are now joined by Elizabeth Bro, a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. Thanks very much, ma'am, for speaking to Vion. Now, the European Union has said it is not going to declare IRGC as terrorists. Instead, it will impose fresh sanctions against Iranian officials. Fact of the matter is, from the United Kingdom to the United States and many other entities in Europe have already imposed multiple sanctions on Iran. But clearly, none of that has proven to be a deterrent for the regime. Therefore, will this latest move by the European Union be enough to penalize Iran? How do you impose a cost that's big enough for the regime to stop the persecution of its own people? including these executions of the protesters that are being reported every other day. Yeah, this is the headache that uh, Western uh, uh, officials and, and decision makers uh, are struggling with at the moment because it, what is happening to the protesters in Iran, including the executions, is clearly unacceptable. The problem that Western decision makers uh, uh, and, and uh, other, do, other officials have is what can they do to stop that? Because this is something that is happen, happening domestically in Iran and uh, any country um, can claim that if, if you interfere in that country, you are uh, you are uh, you are uh, illegitimately uh, uh, well, you're in, illegitimately interfering in that any country should have the right to look after its own affairs. So it is very difficult every time uh, a Western country, any other country, tries to come to the aid of people being uh, harassed, 
uh, discriminated against, persecuted, even executed in their home countries because it's it, it, there isn't really uh, an international playbook for what to do to help citizens within their own country. And, and I think your uh, viewers who may be a little bit uh, older may remember what it was like during the Cold War when the West tried to help uh, citizens behind the Iron Curtain. It wasn't easy then either. Yes, there are no easy answers. This is a very complex issue, as our report mentioned earlier, that uh, for the longest time, nothing seemed to deter Iran, even from carrying on with the uranium enrichment, for example. But here we're talking about very serious human rights violations of the Iranian people. While you say that there is no international playbook on how something like this should be dealt with, and I understand that point that you're making, the question still remains, is the international community going to just remain a mute spectator as people's rights are trampled upon, as uh, death sentences are handed out every other day without even due trial? Uh, it, it is uh, a, a, a tragedy, and I think it's safe to say that the Western officials are looking at every possible way uh, to, to, to try to punish Iran without escalating the situation, because we should remember that Western governments are, at the moment, are... Uh, extremely focused on, on trying to help Ukraine win the war uh, that Russia has launched against it, because if, if Ukraine doesn't win, then uh, the rest of Europe is it faces a very dangerous uh, country in uh, on its doorstep. So Ukraine is the focus at the moment, and that's not to say that Iranian um, protesters are somehow l worth less than, than Ukrainians, but uh, uh, Ukraine is, is clearly closer to Europe, and it's consuming so many resources because uh, in, in terms of uh, attention and money and, and, and so forth, um, that it's very difficult to, to focus e extensively on another issue. Then the, uh, there is the other thing, that if, if you, uh, if the European Union or any other country were to declare um, the Revolutionary Guard Corps, a terrorist organization, then Iran would certainly retaliate in some way. And that is the risk. And then the, those countries would have to retaliate back. And so there is a, the really concrete risk of an escalatory uh, chain of events uh, being set in motion. And so I think that that's what European officials are trying to do. They're trying to punish uh, Iranian officials uh, while not risking escalation with a country that that uh, unfortunately has very um, very significant capabilities and could do serious harm if it were to escalate uh, against against the European Union or or indeed against the UK or or the US and and that is a really the extremely difficult situation we are in at the moment where. Um, Everybody knows what the right thing to do is ethically. We want to support, we want Iranian protesters to, to have freedom. But th there is just such a limited way of making that happen in another country. Right. Nobody wants to risk an escalation as that does come at a very heavy cost. But how do you deal with dictatorial regimes around the world that are hell-bent on persecuting their own people and are in fact in the process committing the most egregious human rights violations that remains a million dollar yes. question but a question that we don't really seem to have an answer to at the moment that's right and we should remember that that the other countries doing the same thing uh, yes. for example what is being done to the to the Uyghur minority in china hmm. uh, again european western officials are trying to find ways to support uh, the uyghurs and, and punish the, the chinese officials responsible but again it's it's so difficult to make a, a dictatorial authoritarian regime change mm. its ways, uh, whether you live in that country or whether you represent another country. It's uh, it, it is really uh, an extremely, uh, uh, extremely challenging position to be in. And, and uh, China and Iran are not the only countries we're seeing uh, human rights abuses in so many different countries is happening in a number of countries around the globe. How does the international community deal with it? That does remain a, an enormous challenge. Elizabeth Brawl, thanks very much for sharing your perspective with Vion.